For over 40 years, Syrians have been living under emergency law, effectively suspending all their constitutional rights. Officially, it was implemented by the Ba'ath Party in 1963. The Ba'ath Party is a, is a constitutional dictator, and this is what plants fear in the Syrian people and ignites their fight for freedom. Nearly all of Syria's media media outlets are state-owned, and the Ba'ath Party controls all their newspapers. The authorities operate several, several intelligence agencies employing a large number of operatives. Human rights in Syria have been described as very poor, and since 1963, emergency rule has remained in effect, which gives security forces sweeping powers to arrest and detain. The country is governed by a one-party state without free elections. The authorities harass and imprison human rights activists, and other critics of the government. Freedom of expression, association, and assembly are strictly controlled. In 1982, Hafez al-Assad responded to an uprising in the city of Hama, where I'm from, by a military force to kill over 30,000 civilians, including women, children, and the elderly. When Syrians had enough of this and wanted change from the humiliation and ill treatment of the status quo, the government made a few changes. Bashar lifted the emergency law gave some Kurd cities Syrian citizenship and freed some political prisoners, but yet that was not enough. There is still no justice. Where, where is this no justice? There will never be peace. The protest keeps growing and so is the crackdown and the government's denial of what they have been up to in Syria. Since March, over 1,300 people have died and over 10,000 have arrested, tortured, and their families have no idea of what the condition is. Some return alive, but with evidence of extreme torture all over their bodies and some dead with evidence of extreme, extreme torture before death. This is exactly why we're here today. Syria isn't the only one crying because of oppression. Tunisia, Egypt, Yemen, Palestine are also crying and dying. We are blessed to be in a safe country like Canada where we have our basic rights and more. But our families, friends and others in our homeland are still suffering. We need to unite in mind, body and spirit to stand against the monster called oppressive dictatorship. No we need to stand by all, we need to stand by the oppressed all over the world and show them that they'll never be alone. Let's not forget one country that has been suffering for too long and the longest. Let's not forget Palestine! <laughs> Representing the Palestinian community, let's welcome Shifa! So when they first asked me to speak, I'm thinking, okay, how do I just, how do I just give justice to 63 years of oppression in these next few minutes. 63 years of torture, mass murder, and most importantly, 63 years of being ignored. The time is now to stand for the voiceless. The time is now to join together to end the Palestinian struggle for freedom. So far I will say this, whether it's Israel's Netanyahu, whether it's Obama, whether it's Gaddafi, whether it's Saleh, whether it's uh, Bashar. Let's say this to them. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Do not be fooled by the Zionists. The ones who, who dehumanize, argue with old pieces of history and bring religion and race to the question. We fight for humanity and justice no matter where you are and who you're from. So now I will read you a quote from a Palestinian woman living in Gaza who tells you um, who she's thanking everyone, who she's talking to the activists, so I'll read this for you. You demonstrate that religion, no race, is important when it comes to standing up for the rights of human beings. And every step you take, justice and humanity wins. I want you to trust that your actions are making a difference and changing the violence we see here in our land. Your solidarity is helping fuel our nonviolent fight. Palestinians face many kinds of violence and torture. However, being ignored is the worst punishment of them all. Those who refuse to hear and see us are just as bad as those who occupy us. And so I will say that Palestinians are honored to have so many activists around the world risk their lives, time, and money to stand up for Palestine. They sabotage our flotilla. They shoot us when we hold up a flag. They displace us from our homes. But all the sacrifice has never gone to waste. Because Israel, we can see you. The world can see you. And you can't hide from us. No, we've mentioned pretty much almost all the countries that are going with the revolution except for one country. And that is we saved what started from first last.
I'm going 